everybody, the tools I'm gonna show you in this video are all items I use in my shop and find very valuable, or they were suggested that I use in my shop, so I went ahead and picked them up to try them out to let you know what I think. They're all between 10 and $40, so they're pretty budget-friendly additions to the shop, so let's get started. First up is the Pika Dry Mechanical Pencil. Now, these are all over YouTube, and people seem to like them a lot, so I went ahead and picked one up to try it out. All right, so the first thing you notice about this is this case holster thingy with a clip on it, so you can put it on your apron or your belt, look like a real woodworker. That's kind of nice. And then when you look at the actual pencil, boy, that is stout. That is a fat lead with a sharp point, and the clicking action is nice and smooth. When I do that, I mean, you can see how far out the lead has already advanced after just a couple of clicks. That's a super nice feature as well. But that does have me wondering, would this really be good for a shop environment because I suspect that lead's gonna get dull fast and start to leave some big fat reference lines. Let's check that out. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see, we'll do one, two, three, four. Yeah. So you can see where I started, it was nice and thin and then it got fat even by the time I get to the end of the first one and it just got worse from there. It's worse. It's so much worse. It does have this little sharpener built into the bottom of the case, so I can get that lead nice and sharp again. But you know, I don't know if I want to stop every three or four marks to sharpen this thing back up. That doesn't really mesh with how efficient I like to be in the shop. A fair point. My go-to in the shop has always been a traditional mechanical pencil. Nerd. So the pencil I use in the shop is the Pentel Graph Gear 1000, and in my opinion, there are no better mechanical pencils on the market right now. It has an amazing fit and finish. It's an all metal design. It does have these raised cushion nubs on the writing side here, so it gives you a nice comfortable feel, but you also have the knurling to give you good grip. The other thing I like about this pencil is the retractable tip. So just like on the Pika, where you've got the case that can protect the actual lead, you've got the same thing here, just in a little bit different design. If I push on this, that will bring out the tip and the lead so you can write with it and then when you want to put it in your pocket or set it down and not have the tip be damaged you can click the clip and it will retract that back into the body of the pencil. I know the big gripe about these is that the lead's too thin and it breaks when you drag it across the board but I think the main reason for that is that people don't use them right. They go overboard when extending the lead out and put way too much leverage on that fine tip. When all you really got to do is double tap baby. That way the little metal sleeve can do its actual job and support the lead at the end. With the right amount of lead showing, it's much harder to break. And here's that line next to the Pika. It's a pretty fine mark with 0.5 millimeter lead, and of course the line isn't gonna get fatter because the lead is a consistent thickness. And if I do break the lead, I just double tap it and I'm back to a perfectly fine point. And to help remember what to do, just come up with a clever saying like, uh, just double tap and the lead won't snap. Boom! <laughs> And since we talked about marking, we should also talk about measuring. For me, finding the best tape measure has been a journey. A long journey. Two, four, six, eight, ten, four, four. I have 18 tape measures. Nobody needs 18 tape measures. It's my secret shame. But I think I can save you from that and just boil this embarrassment down into what I've learned. All right, to start, all these gotta go. That was uncalled for, I'm sorry. Those are all fine, but they're big, and they're really for building houses, not for building what goes inside a house. So pick one or two 25 or 30 foot tape measures and throw them in a drawer for when you need them. Now, let's check out what's left. Ah, this little guy rocks. The Stanley Powerlock 12 foot tape measure is compact and small, so it fits really easily into your pocket or your apron. It also has 32nd of an inch marks on it all the way up to one foot to allow for a little bit extra accuracy in your measurement. And if there was such a thing as an everyday carry tape measure, this would be the one that I would choose. But as nice as that Stanley is, the FastCat brand of tape measures are just so much better. Here, check this out. You got a nice rubberized case on it. All the tapes are in high contrast, black and white. You can write in this little whiteboard area if you need to take quick measurement. They've also got a finger actuated break on the bottom so that you prevent snapping your tape back in. And they've also come with a built-in tape measure, which is super nice as well. Wait, what did he say? This model even has the measurements mirrored on both sides so that you can read it from the right or from the left-hand side. And for all of you non-imperial users, this is the metric version of that same mirrored style. Imperial trash. Okay, but what if you're like me and you only pretend to hate metric when there's a Canadian in the chat, but secretly you like to use it to set up all your festival gear? 
Well, they have a tape measure for that too. It's another compact 12 foot model, but this one has both metric and normal measurements on it. He's imperial. But there's still one more model that has a feature that I think makes it the best tape measure for the shop. This is the FastCat Flatback, which has a flat and flexible tape measure so that you can take accurate measurements even when your work has curves and contours. This one also has the metric and imperial measurements on it and you still get the finger brake, the whiteboard, the pencil sharpener, the heated leather seats. Wait, 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 what? Oh, sorry, got a little carried away there. Well, I bet you didn't think I could stir the pot talking about tape measures, but I think I can bring us all back together because whether you use metric or imperial, the next tool on the list is super handy when you need it. So a thread checker is a set of these little studs and they come in all different sizes. This set has imperial measurements as well as metric measurements. And on the imperial side, it goes from a number six screw all the way up to a half inch. And on the metric side, it goes from four millimeter up to 12 millimeter. And basically each one of these little studs has a male threaded end and a female threaded end. So if I wanted to know the size of this random bolt, I would just check it against the female threads. So first I'm gonna try 3 8 24, and so that gives me trouble, it gets jammed up, so it's not that, maybe it's 3 8 16. And that threads in perfectly, so now I've identified that bolt. And I can use it to identify the nuts as well, I just use the male threaded in, so it would go on here like this. And it needs to go effortlessly. If it's not doing that, if it's giving you any type of jam up or not going on completely, then it's either not the right thread count or it may not be imperial, it may be something on the metric side and you need to try one over here until that threads on effortlessly and doesn't give you any trouble. And if you have a machine part or something with a threaded hole in it and you don't know what size screw it takes, you can use the male threaded end of this to identify what goes in there so you don't waste a trip to the hardware store getting the wrong size bolt. Super handy tool. Nice, that's very nice. So the next item I wanna show you, I'm kind of embarrassed to say I didn't even know was a thing until I was DMing someone complaining about how it's 2022 and why aren't all screwdrivers magnetized? And they said, hey, you should just get a magnetizer. And I'm like, what? What's this sorcery? So this is a magnetizer demagnetizer and it does, well, exactly what it says it does. And this one is from Weha, which is a tool brand that I trust, but there's like 50 different brands on Amazon and they're all basically 10 bucks. I don't know what the difference between them are, but this is the one that I got. So you're able to magnetize on this side and then reverse that magnetism on this side. Now, I don't know why the heck anybody would want to magnetize something and then demagnetize it, but whatever. All right, so to do this, you're supposed to take whatever you want to have magnetized and pass it through the magnetized side. Magnetize, listen to me. And the more you do this, it's supposed to increase the magnetism. So I don't know how long you're supposed to do this, but this is starting to get uncomfortable. All right, let's give it a try. Uh oh, wait a minute. Mm. Ah, I bet these are brass. <laughs> it's live TV, folks. Try again. All right. Ooh, hey. Uh oh, can I get the fourth? Can I get the fourth? Come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, no, I lost it. All right, so let's put it on the end. Oh yeah, that's nice. So now I can get that into tight spaces. I don't have to worry about that falling down and getting into a spot where I can't get it out again. That is awesome. All right, now let's undid what we had did. I'm gonna remove the magnetism now. All right, so let's see. And, oh, uh oh, still magnetizing, but it's definitely not as strong. Oh, let me try that again. All right, and now, whoop, I guess that one's got a little bit of grab. Yeah, I can't seem to get rid of that magnetism all the way, but it's definitely not nearly as strong as it was when I magnetized it. Hmm, interesting. So that worked pretty well. I did have a little bit of trouble demagnetizing the small screwdriver, but again, I really only care about magnetizing them. So if that's something that would be a concern to you, maybe you hold off, but I would definitely recommend having one of these to magnetize any of your old screwdrivers. Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying watching this video as much as I enjoy making it. In fact, I enjoy making it so much, I'm thinking about adding this as a regular feature to the channel, but to do that, I need your help. If there are any inexpensive shop items you'd like me to check out in a future video, please leave those down in the comments below. And also all the items in this video, I will have links for down in the description so you can check those out for yourself. All right, that's it, back to the video.
The next item I have is this ratcheting screwdriver from Wera Tools or Vera Wagner. I don't know, but I do know it's a pretty cool tool. All right, so if you've never used a ratcheting screwdriver, just imagine that a ratchet and a screwdriver had this wonderfully engineered and efficient German baby, and that's what you have here. So basically you can turn this little dial right or left, and it will have the ratcheting action tighten or loosen, or you can put it in the middle and it will just go into dumb mode, just like a regular screwdriver. And if I push the button on the bottom, there's a hidden compartment in here where the bits for the driver are held. I have flat heads, I've got Phillips heads, and I've got square heads. I'm a little disappointed there are no Torx or hex bits in here, but this is a regular quarter inch socket, so you can go ahead and use any of the bits that you have in your shop. They'll work in here just fine, and you can use the screwdriver. The bit driver is magnetic, which again, if you know me, makes this an automatic winner in my book, so you just slide your bit in and you're ready to go. What makes a ratcheting screwdriver nice is that it makes driving screws easier because you don't lose contact with the head of the screw as you reset the screwdriver to turn it again. This is especially nice if you're driving screws above your head or in tight spots where if you lose or drop the screw, you might not get it back. I really love having multitaskers in the shop because it helps eliminate the clutter of extra tools. And combining the ratcheting feature with a screwdriver is a really neat way to do that and I definitely recommend picking up one of these. The next item on the list is one that, well, the internet made me buy, and that is a set of one, two, three blocks. Treat yourself. Now these are admittedly pretty cool looking and they're relatively cheap. They're only $20 for a pair. Now these are generally considered precision metalworking tools and not really for woodworking, but I can see a couple of applications where this would come in handy in the shop. They get their names from the dimensions of the block. This is one inches thick, two inches wide, and three inches long. So looking at this a little closer, you can see that it's got some threaded inserts in it that allow you to attach this to a work surface or you can attach it to another one, two, three block to extend the reference surface. These are very precisely machined tools that can be used to set saw blade heights and router bits as well as check the squareness of your machines. But the biggest issue I have with these is not in their accuracy, but in their usefulness for woodworking operations because these are not common woodworking dimensions. Where's the three quarter inch or half inch or one and a half inch? So even though I think these are handy and cheap tools to have around the shop, I don't think they can replace a full set of setup blocks. The set that comes from eye gauging gives you a full range of measurements from 16th of an inch all the way up to three quarters, as well as the odd sizes that match common plywoods. And you also get a one, two, three block in this, and it's got these handy gauge lines on the side. So if you need to set a saw blade height, you can use it for that as well. These are definitely more of an investment than getting a pair of one, two, three blocks, but honestly, I find myself reaching for these way more often than I do these when I need to set something up. It is nice that you can attach this to a work surface if you need a nice square edge or a stop block, or if you need to check the squareness of your joiner fence or a table saw blade and you don't already have a square. But other than that, I think they're pretty limited in their use. All right, so switching gears, I wanna talk about two drilling tools that I find super helpful and must-haves for the shop. The first thing is a set of self-centering drill bits, and these are from a company called the Vic Tool Company, and you'll usually hear these called Vix bits. No matter the brand, they usually come in a set of three, and they cover screw hole sizes from number two screws all the way up to number 10. So how they work is they've got this little drill bit inside of this spring-loaded sleeve, and the sleeve has a conical end on it. These bits really shine when you need to install hinges or anywhere where you need to drill exactly in the center of a hole. The conical end fits into the hole on the hinge and perfectly centers it. Plunge the drill bit and get a perfect hole for your screw. And if you've magnetized your screwdriver like I just showed you, then this is an easy task to install the screws in the hinge. The second drill bit I wanna show you is probably my favorite tool on this whole video. This countersink drill bit from Amana Tools is a game changer. Now I've showed this in videos before and I'm gonna keep showing it because it's just that cool. It basically takes two jobs, drilling a pilot hole and adding a countersink and turns it into one operation. You can see the drill bit pass through the center of the countersink and there's this outer ring thingy that serves as a depth stop. Both the drill bit and the depth stop can be adjusted to fine tune the depth of cut. The time saving value of this tool becomes really clear when you need to do something like add the back panel to a large cabinet and fasten it with 15 or 20 screws. It cuts the operation in half and if a mana could find a way to drive the screw too, this would be the best woodworking tool of all time. This is the only bit I use for drilling pilot holes. The next two items I wanna show you are both from FastCap again and are pretty handy and innovative items. The first item is this thing called a track rack and it comes in a set of two. Basically, if you've got a track saw, whether it's Festool, Makita, Triton, Craig, whatever, 
These will help you keep your tracks stored up on a wall or like I do on a garage door and out of harm's way. I used to always get worried that I would lean my track up against something, especially the taller ones, knock it over and damage it. And they're really expensive and without the track, the track saw loses a lot of its functionality. So these really help safeguard against that possibility. The design is really simple. You've got a hook here on the bottom where your track rests in and it sits up against this and this little cam lever will come down and lock it into place. This thing isn't going anywhere even after repeatedly opening and closing the garage door. And the other item is really handy if you work with a lot of edge banding and that's the fast cap quad trimmer. After you've applied your edge banding and it's set, you can use this tool to squeeze the workpiece from both sides and run it along the edge, cutting the waste off both sides of the edge banding at once. You don't realize how nice it is to be able to do both sides at once until you're working with 20 panels that all have edge banding on multiple sides and you need to trim all those edges. So the reason they call it a quad trimmer is it's got two sets of cutting edges. So if you're using one set and it starts to get dull in the middle of a project, you don't have to stop. You can just flip it over and start using the other edge for the trimming. And when that side's dull and you need to replace the blades, that's easy too. This just pops apart like this. It's got two screws in here that hold the blades in place and they sell these replaceable blades. So you just pop new blades in, stick this back together, easy peasy and you're ready to go. Well, all right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to leave me some comments down below for any other inexpensive items you'd like me to check out in a future video. And also I do have links for all the items in this video down in the description below if you'd like to check any of those out. And until next time, have fun in the shop.